Okay, so as you can see here in this pyramid, okay, you have, okay, it's in French, it's okay, <clears throat> I will explain it. We have what we call hierarchy of norms or pyramid of Kelsen. I don't know if an introduction to law or the uh, rapport manager, uh, you took uh, somebody explained for you the me meaning of hierarchy of norms. That means we have many norms. We were explaining that in international law, there is a decision taken by uh, decision taken by um, a state, or there is any conflict between two parties of a contract, international contract. And as you can understand, when I say provision, I will explain something here. As I was saying, when I say provision or uh, uh, contract, example. So if we take as example here any sample of a contract, any type of contract. So we have, as you can see here, I'm trying to open it. We have, we have, as you can see in this picture, we have here the parties. And after that, just one moment, please. I need a sample, any, any type of sample. So, okay. Here is a contract, simple contract. So it, uh, uh, don't worry that there is nothing here. I just explained the meaning of provision. You have a contract, you have the parties of this contract, the date of the signature of this contract. And after this, we have the witnesses. And after this, we have provision. This is called provision, scope of services, time, article one, two, three, four. So if there is any problem with a a trade contract, international trade contract, or international commercial contract. Sometimes it happens that between parties there is problems related to related to the provision in a contract. So in this case, because it's international relation, contractual relation, there is some problems problems that happens. Uh, one of the parties or parties doesn't respect sometimes the provisions here, the terms of a contract. So that's why they should refer, as they could mention here in the end of the, uh, the law of the contract, uh, sometimes you can find here, um, required to give into the case, contractor business mailing, contractor. Uh, I don't know anything about this contract, so that's why I'm trying to find declaration so sometimes in the terms of the contract and a provisions they could mention they could mention for example the law of the contract when they when it's mentioned the law of the contract that mean there is um, there is a, uh, a reference or a judicial structure or judicial organization that could uh, resolve or uh, have the right to re to interfere and resolve any conflict that could arise from this relation contractual relation so in case of states in case of states what we could say that in case of states what when they sign contracts or agreements it's like, it's called convention or treaties uh, like the convention i just demonstrated for you uh, vienna convention and this convention sometimes uh, not sometimes uh, this convention have provisions these provisions sometimes could create conflict between states this conflict that could create, could, could uh, that could arise between uh, states, should have a we should have a reference or a judicial uh, organization or organ that could resolve any problem related to this 
trade or commercial relation, international relations. That's why in the WTO, as I was explaining, in the WTO here, we have all the organs related, all the organs related to, um, uh, related to resolve any uh, dispute that could happen between these states. Which states we are talking about? The states here that it's member of the WTO. So if all these states, if there is, for example, a relation between contractual relation between Brazil and Benin, as example, or Belgium, any conflict that could happen or could arise from a contractual relation, because it's an international trade contract or international commercial contract. So any conflict could arise because these Belgium and Brazil is members of the WTO. So the standards and the rules, the settle of rules that should apply on this relation, contractual relations, could should be got from the rules established by the WTO. And any conflict that could happen between them, these two states should they should make as reference and they should have as recourse before the organ related of the arbitration of any con conflict that could arise between Brazil and Belgium before the World Trade Organization. Okay, so any any um, any relation related uh, or any contractual relations that could create any conflict between states that I mentioned or uh, I just. Uh, I just mentioned here, they should refer to the WTO. So I will repeat, if there is any contractual relation between, as example, Belgium and Brazil. So in this case, any conflict that could arise from this contractual relation, they should refer to the WTO organization, uh, World Trade Organization to establish or to um, apply the rules of the WTO which is a part of the international law because international law is a uh, many field and many field as I explained in the first of my lecture in the beginning of the my lecture I explained that the rules the standards made by the World Trade Organization make a part of the international law the international law as you see here is a hierarchy of norm it's in the second level uh, before after the constitution so Anything uh, be, below the international treaties here, they should be, uh, they should abide to the rules of the international treaties. In the hierarchy of norms, we have here contracts, which is the law of the parties. We have any decision taken by the government here in this, this place. We have any law pronounced or promulgated by the parliament here in the third place. I created here a place for the contract. So when I say contract here, that means there is two parties. It could be two states. So anything related to contracts should abide and should respect the international rule. The international rule, the international law will, will dominate. So that means any law, domestic law, any decision taken by a government, any contract made by two, uh, parties like states, two states, should abide to the international rules. Here we are talking about the international trade law. We have we are talking about the international trade rules. Is it clear, guys? Um, so one question: How is those uh, this pyramid called in English? So maybe that uh, we can also Google it in English and have it. Uh, is 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 called pyramid of Kelson. Pyramid. Thank you so much. Kelson. Okay, you will see here. You see it here. Pyramid of Kelson. Okay, image. Thank you. So it comes from the a pure theory of law. Okay, you can see here the picture. You can you can uh, have it also on Google. So Hans Kelsen, it's a um, it's a legal advisor or expert in legal uh, field, pure theory of law. He created this pyramid of norms. 
or hierarchy of norms, which is private legal norms, private orders, secondary legislation, legislation constitution, and you can you should not forget the you should not forget the international treaty. So if you can see here in this picture, I wish that I could find it directly. We have picture here. We have international treaties here in the second place after the constitution. Okay. What? Where is the picture? Here is it. The picture. It's very small, but we can see here that we have the international treaty on this pyramid. So in the theory of flow, we have always this in the second place, as we can see here, we have in the second place the international treaties. In French, it's Traité international. Traité international, that means international treaties. We are talking about international treaty. When I when when we look to the uh, Vienna Convention here. We have the Vienna Convention here. It's an international treaty. So this Vienna Convention treaty in any state will take the second place after the constitution of the state. So if we take as example France, we have the French constitution. After this, we have the international treaties. We have also the European uh, European treaties. After that, we have the, le the law, ordinary law, and we have decision taken by the government. So any law, uh, made by the French uh, parliament, any decision taken by the government, French government should not uh, violate the legal international or European rules. So it should abide and should respect the international legal rules, including the international states of goods, because France is part, it's a member of the WTO. It's clear for now. So, guys, is it clear? Yeah, yeah, all good. Thank you, Professor. Okay. So, now uh, I will uh, continue to explain the objective of this convention, which is, as I said, the, two, the second main element in uh, international trade, in international trade law. We have, uh, we were saying, uh, considering that development, so it's very important for the development of international trade, being of the opinion that the adoption of uniform rules, so I said that in any in any field we have a standards, in law also, in international law related to trade, we have uniform rules or standards, which govern contracts for international sale of goods and take into account the different social, economic, and legal systems would contribute to the removal of legal barriers in international trade and promote the development of international trade. So the, the objective of this convention and the objective in general of the international trade is to, uh, to make or to establish or to realize development in international trade first, to secure the international trade between states and to uh, put standards or uniform uh, uniform to unify the rules between states so that's why the, we reduce the conflict that could happen that each state have is its own rules so if we have in like you know in each state we have uh, each state have its own rules so we, ca we cannot treat or we cannot trade, we cannot make trade between states if we have not unified the rules between these states. So that's why we have the idea or the um, theory to create what we call international trade law. As I said, the international trade law, it's a part of the international law in general. So that's why in this, in this situation we can unify the standards that could apply in the legal uh, field. Second, sphere. If we can take as example, if we take as example, uh, sphere of application of the general and general provision, if we take Article 1 of this convention, so to understand what I'm explaining, this convention applies to contract of sale of goods. So it's very clear here in the title of this convention that it's re related to sale of goods between parties so when we talk about goods and services we talk about the vienna convention and international trade between parties who places of business are in different states so another condition 
well so the first thing the first condition is that trade should be uh, related to goods and second the trade should happen or should take place between two states these two, two uh, conditions to apply this convention first in a when the states are contracting states so we should have states that could have the legal personality so when we say states that means that they have legal personality and second sorry when the rules of private international law lead to the application of the law of contracting state so in this case in this both elements as i explained we have uh, goods and we have uh, different states and the states give the authorization to uh, apply this convention so that means the, if we have these two elements we could apply this international convention and this international convention dominates all the legal uh, block and all the decisional governmental block that could be taken in any state state which sign a contract uh, international trade contract so this is about the uh, international convention we will go back again about the vienna convention in um, in the next lectures we should now talk about a few topics related to international trade so when we talk about international trade we should understand the type of topics that it's related to this uh, field of studies we have as i said in the first in the beginning at the beginning of this lecture i said that we have topics that we should trade so when we talk about international trade law we talk about international sales of goods that mean vienna convention as i explained so here is the vienna convention on the international sale of goods of 1980 which is uh, it's established in 1980 we talk also about regulating the electronic commerce environment so there is, as you know, very like uh, if we take as example Amazon and uh, 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 Alibaba, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, we have many, many um, um, uh, websites which and eBay uh, which treat and there is a lot. So uh, which treat uh, between states? That means there is a client that exists, for example, in France. And the product is co it come from China or come from UK or from USA. So there is a contractual relation that will be created between the, uh, the between the client and the uh, company that use this website. So if we take as in uh, if we take in cons as example Amazon. So I'm buying a book from Amazon. Uh, Amazon exists, for example. Uh, in USA uh, considering that I live in Russia so when I buy this book from USA there is a contractual relation between USA and the Russia Contra is the client in Russia and the company which exists in USA so there is rules that govern this contractual relation between two uh, parties that exist in two different states first like the Vienna Convention explaining and second thing that is a electronic it's an electronic commerce it's at an electronic trade I could buy goods and services from a company which exists in another states by via electronic website etc etc so that's why there is legal issues that uh, could arise because of this um, trade electronic trade and we should uh, create standards that related to this relation electronic uh, trade relation transportation of cargo it's a part of the field of international trade like you know that so before i uh, pass to the third part in the second part like the first part so we need the standards that govern this type of commerce this type of trade which is called electronic com uh, electronic commerce or electronic trade third part transaction or transportation of cargo cargo as you know uh, products to be sent 
to be delivered from a state to another. So it's called cargo. These cargoes, it could be by airplane, it could be by uh, ships, etc., etc. So there is many type like DHL. I could give you as example DHL and uh, FedEx, etc. So they should have also its own rules related to this relation, which is called transportation of cargo. When we talk about transportation of cargo, we talk about risks related to uh, risks related to the products transported by cargo. As you can see here, you have you have you have the cargo or the delivery with by air, the delivery by rail, and the delivery by roll, and the delivery by transport uh, multimodal or uh, any type of transportation. These types of transportation should be governed by set of rules. So why we should have a set of rules like a electronic commerce environment and like the and like the international sales of goods, we should we have risks and sometimes we have legal disputes that could arise for any for the transportation of cargo. For example, the vanishing of the cargo of 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 the uh, products when I'm going to transport uh, transport these uh, products or for example the uh, damage that could happen to these products so we need standards that govern this um, this type of uh, delivery uh, delivering or delivery of uh, products so that's why we have many convention and many uh, rules standards we can call for legal rules, we can call it legal standards also. We have many rules that could govern or govern this um, type of delivery of products. We have, as example, Hamburg rules and Rotterdam rules. We have international carriage of goods by air, by rail, by road, and by transport. As you know, in each state, if we take as example UK or USA or France or Germany, etc., or Belgium, all these states have its private or its uh, own uh, law of um, transportation in air. Uh, they have the code or law of uh, transportation by rail or by road. Okay, and they have the trans uh, maritime transportation also and maritime trade. They have air trade and they have maritime trade. So we could not we could not resolve. A legal dispute if it if arise between two states if there is any problem because of the transportation of products and we could not apply all the type of um, uh, or specific domestic law uh, in in certain cases so that's why we should unify the rules related to transportation of cargo so one of the part one part part of the international trade law it's laws related to international international rules legal rules related to transportation of cargo this is the part three is it clear guys yes clear okay yeah. any question related to these parts Guys, no sir. It's is there clear. any question? No, no. It's uh, it's clear to now. Okay, I will go to the part four. In international trade law, also we have financing and insurance. Like you know, when we talk about, as example, transportation of cargo, we uh, it's an obligation to have insurance. So. This insurance is international insurance and financing. So the finance or how to pay the products, how to pay the transportation, all these details related to uh, the payment, the, uh, the type of payment, the means of payment, les moyens, the means of payment, les moyens de paiement. So all these uh, also treated by unified legal rules, international legal rules related to marine insurance letters of credits letter of credits it's about financing and marine insurance it's re related or talk about how to uh, 
uh, to uh, have insurance on products in case of delivery or, or transportation of cargo or and products, goods and services. So, as I said, these parts of the international trade law, we can talk also about um, many other many other uh, legal rules in international law. We can talk, for example, about intellectual property. We can talk about patterns in international law because all these things related to international uh, trade law. As example, if I talk about international um, international uh, out. If I talk about inter intellectual property and international law, intellectual property, you could, for example, have a license to use, as example, Microsoft on your laptop. So this uh, this type of interaction is electronic first. You can buy it by uh, by on the website of Microsoft, and second, you have a intellectual property on Microsoft on the applications that you can use so and there is two state two different states and you have two types in two different state uh, two clients in two different states or a company and a client in two different states so that's why we apply the international rules related to intellectual property which is also related it's a part of the international trade law so in all these situations, when we talk about when we talk about international trade law, I gave many uh, examples. I gave many. We talk here in many parts about the type of international trade law. Sometimes, sometimes, as I mentioned many times, sometimes we have a dispute that could arise between parties. We have disputes that could arise between parties. So that's why we should understand the, uh, the structures of jurisdiction in states, the international jurisdictions that we have in international trade law. So we have in each state, we have structure, judicial structure. This judicial structure is simplified by the image of a judge. We have a judge who resolve any uh, dispute or he, who interfere in case of any dispute resolution. So any dispute resolution that could take place in a stake, in, the, uh, in state, in domestic law, we have a judge. This is the simpli uh, simplified image about judicial system or judicial structure. When we talk about international law, when we talk about international trade law, we have also um, organs, as I said uh, at the beginning when I was talking about the WTO, I said that there is organs that is have uh, the um, uh, specialty or the competencies to treat any or to have the dispute resolution or to resolve any dispute that could arise between states. So we have, as example also, I gave you the example in a contract between clients, two states, that buying services or products one from the others so in this case they could choose uh, the law that govern the relation between these states in case of any uh, uh, disputes that could happen between these states of course the international trade law that will apply but also they could choose the law that governs this contract foreign judgment in case of foreign judgment how it's happened how we ex execute in international trade law, how we execute the foreign judgment, it's not for you a responsibility. It's not your responsibility to understand related uh, everything related to the choice of law and the foreign judgment, etc. But it's very important to have a mention, a notion or definition about foreign judgment. So we are going to explain this in the ne next lectures related to international trade law. Arbitration is very important. You should understand the meaning of arbitration. Arbitration, when two states have a legal disputes between them, between each others, and they accept to refer to arbitrators, this arbitrator will give his decision. This decision, if states accept the arbitration, the decision will be binding for the parties. Uh, is there any question? So when making a contract, 
the contract you can choose to use a certain state law. Exactly, yeah. You can, in fact, if it happens, I was working for uh, the CNES um, Centre um, des Etudes Spatiales, National des Etudes Spatiales, Centre National des Etudes Spatiales en France. So, uh, I was working for a company, we give services in France, we give uh, services for uh, another state, which is um, connection and uh, uh, control and observation of um, of the uh, maritime life, uh, animal maritime life. So our services give the connection and give products for other co countries that doesn't have access to satellites, etc., etc. Connection. So we give, for example, services for um, we give example services for um, just I want to stop the share screen what's happening here do you see me guys yes yeah okay Professor, so we see you. i i was saying that we give services and products for vietnam as example so we sign a contract between france and vietnam the government of vietnam and this company which exists in france or which was the French government if there is any services that give, given by the French government to the Vietnamese uh, government. So in this case, when we sign this contract, to answer your question, in the provisions that I demonstrated on in this sample, the contract sample, uh, in, the, in the one of these provisions has the title of uh, law of the contract. We could choose, for example, by the negotiation between Vietnam and this French company, we could um, deal or we could agree that, or we could uh, reach the agreement that the French law will apply on in, in this contract, on this contract, and parties of this contract should will abide for the French rules, legal rules, okay? What I explained also, to complete your question, the answer on your question, what I explained, also, in case of any conflict, because of the application of the French law in this situation, in this case that we took here, the contract between Vietnam and uh, a French company, any case related to the application of the law, we could refer in the trade, it's condition, it's a condition, in trade, we could refer to the international trade law. Okay, so in case of any conflict that could happen between the parties, any one, one of the parties, if he, he feels that there is any damage could happen to him or any violation made by the other party against him, that means doesn't respect his obligation on duties in this contract, they could refer to the WTO, the organs, which is the arbitrator, Arbitrate, arbitrator in any conflict in, in the international trade and to ask, to request to resolve any problem related to this contractual relation between Vietnam and the French company. But under one condition, in case of arbitration, so to go to the judge, to the uh, judicial system, uh, national judicial system, they should deal, they should accept in the contract which type of laws that will apply? Is it the French laws that will apply? Or is it the Vietnamese laws that will apply? It depends. It depends the, uh, the deal, the agreement made between the two parties. But in case that they need to refer to the arbitration, international arbitration, before the WTO, they should, in fact, Re, uh, make another agreement. That means they should modify, which is called amendment, they should modify the agreement, the first ag agreement, or they should make a separate agreement that parties accept to go to the arbitration, to the arbitrator, to the arbitrator, which is the WTO, and in this case, we apply the international trade law. All the rules related to, for example, if we take as example, rules related to the transportation of cargo or the uh, Vienna uh, Convention of 1980 in case of trade of goods between two states. Is it clear, guys? Any question? Hey, professor, so you have to use both, is that right? So 
like you would start out by deciding which country's law to use and then in the case of a dispute then you default to the wto's laws is that correct exactly but under one condition is to accept that mean parties accept to go to the organ responsible of the arbitration in case of any dispute dispute could happen between parties so we need another agreement a new agreement related to arbitration i'm talking just about arbitration okay but but in case you apply for example one of the domestic laws french law or vietnamese law in this case you can use the international rules related to your case and to uh, apply it on your situation and to file it before before a judge a local judge a national judge okay so you can use the international rules to it's like in human rights i will give you an example if for example there is any violation of the rules of in human rights in a certain country related to freedom related to freedom of expression related to the investigation made in case of crime etc etc so in, in this case you could use the international rules related to human rights as example the universal declaration of human rights to say to the judge that the universal declaration of human rights which is a part of the international law says that the freedom of expression is absolute so you can file this in your law in your lawsuit you can file it before the judge by saying also that article uh, for example number 23 of the universal declaration of human rights forbid slavery and uh, for and gives the permission as example of the freedom of expression the other party didn't respect or the who violate this uh, principle doesn't respect universal declaration so i request from the court to for example uh, to judge this lawsuit and to give me right about my request and also to uh, give me the right of compensation on the damage that could happen to uh, my uh, my uh, rights okay so here what which which happened in the international trade law the same thing you have a contract between two companies from two different states in case of con a conflict that could arise between these two companies for certain violation of the provision of a this contract that relate both in this case you can use the law that accepted from both parties in case this law doesn't is not sufficient that mean you can find all the answer in this law about your situation about your case you can refer to the international law the judge also is is based on the pyramid um, the pyramid of Kelsen or the hierarchy of norms that i demonstrated in the picture he is obliged to refer to the international trade law in case of international trade even if the parties of a contract accepted to that they will apply the french law or the vietnamese law the judge has the right to refer to the international law it's a bit complica complicated that's why yeah, for you that's why i didn't uh, when i was explaining about dispute resolution i gave the uh, choice of law for any judgment etc i said that you are not a law student that's why i can't go a lot in details because it's very complicated for you to uh, understand everything related to choice of law so that's why I was talking about arbitration. What is arbitration? It's very important in international trade that we have arbitration. It's, it's recognized. We have many, for example, um, arbitrator uh, or arbitration council or arbitration uh, organs. We have, for example, arbitration um, council or organ in um, International Court of Arbitration in France, in Paris. We have in UK, in London. We have in the uh, Arab states, we have in uh, many other states, we have international court of arbitration. So we have many types. Even for sport, we have uh, international courts for arbitration. So the most important international trade law, which is interest us, not the not the local judge. We are interested by arbitration, international arbitration. So that's why 
very simply now and fast i i need to give you a definition what is arbitration to understand the meaning of arbitration i will i will uh, share my screen here so to understand the meaning of arbitration as you can see here we have mediation also and conciliation we it's enough for me to give uh, to make the, the uh, comparison between mediation and arbitration to understand the meaning of arbitration so mediation is when we call somebody okay and this somebody will be the mediator the mediator will interfere or will uh, use his technique he normally he is expert in the field he we, he use his techniques to resolve to resolve any uh, problems that could happen between the parties of a contract so in this case the mediator will give the solution of how, on how to resolve this dis dispute legal dispute or contractual dispute parties of a mediation the parties that uh, have uh, have made a call for a mediator could accept the decision or the solution given by the mediator and could, could refuse it. It's the difference with arbitration. When we make a call, when we call an arbitrator, so I'm trying to be simple, very simple in this. When we call an arbitrator, in arbitration, when we accept to make arbitration to resolve our disputes that could happen in, in a certain in our contractual relation because of a violation of certain provision of the contract the arbitrator will give the arbitrator the arbitrator will give his um, decision and this decision will be binding that means parties of arbitration should respect the decision given by an arbitrator you will tell me how it will be, how, how it could be uh, binding it could be binding because it's recognized by the local by the local uh, jurisdiction that mean in case one of the parties who accepted to go to arbitration didn't respect the decision made by the arbitrator the other party could take the decision and go to the civil jurisdiction in the state where he exists that mean in france as example and he could file a request for the judge to accept to uh, put the stamp of the judge on this decision made by the arbitrator if we have the stamp the stamp le tampon if we have the stamp of the judge on the decision made by the arbitrator the arbitrator could be somebody else in this case the arbitration this arbitrary decision which is called reward okay like decision international this united nations is called resolution any decision made by an arbitrator is called reward this reward could be executed like a judicial decision you understand so that means if we have an internet if we have an international court of arbitration and parties of international trade contract accepted to go before this international uh, international arbitrary uh, court they should accept the decision by made by the, this international court so in case that one of the parties refuse to execute the decision by made by the international court of arbitration okay the other party who have the interest to apply this decision could go to his state and or the state of the other party and could demand request from the judge local judge to uh, give his stamp or to put his stamp on this decision arbitrary decision which is called reward and this decision will be transformed and will be like a normal judicial decision which that mean that mean the other party doesn't respect a judicial decision will be uh, pursued in the before the court is it clear guys any question so i have a question 
but it's yes. something only yes. so let's say i like i'm an american company and i want to make a deal with a french company so it would okay. be legal if the two of us choose to for example follow german law so that would be possible as well so if the, we don't want to follow american law we don't want to follow french law and then we decide to to do follow law from a completely different country that would be possible yes this is, it's possible first of all and I like I said before, uh, I was trying to explain the hierarchy of norms. I said that contracts, I, I used this term. I said contract is the law of uh, parties. That means we create the, the law under one condition that we should always respect the general principles of law. That means you cannot deal for to sell or to buy drugs. Okay? <laughs> we cannot. We cannot deal for to, for example, for uh, the uh, subject of a contract, for example, prostitution. Okay, all these acts are illegal. We cannot deal as contra uh, as contractor, as parties of a contract. We cannot deal in a contract. We cannot have an agreement for an illegal subject. In case that we deal for something which is legal, in this case, we can choose any law that we. Uh, find it's uh, uh, we find useful for our contractual relation there is no problem okay so in this case uh, like you the question you ask you, uh, you are asking in this case uh, Basel just uh, one minute please so in this case uh, just I'm answering here about uh, German law in this case, in case of legal disputes that arise between parties in the future after the signature of a contract, parties they should apply the German law. Okay. In case they need to go to the international, for example, court or arbitrary court, they should make another deal, or they should include in the first contract a provision which which is called law of the contract where they mention that in case of any conflict that could arise between parties, parties directly go to the International Court of Arbitration. Basel. Okay, thank you. Yes, doctor, I just want to just wanna be sure about something. So, for example, yeah. two parties can draw up any contract they like, any contract they like, uh, agreeing on whatever terms they want to agree on. However, if the deal goes bad, if they uh, if they get in a dispute, they will refer to international law. Under one condition that they accept international law, we can use it anytime. As I gave uh, I gave an example about human rights. If you have any crime that could happen or any violation for human rights, your human rights, in a state, uh, as example Lebanese state, uh, Syrian state, or French state, or U U.S. state, etc you have the right to use the international law okay in case they should refer to an international arbitrator that's what i'm saying or local arbitrators they need to change the first agreement or they should make a separate agreement or they should mention in the provision of the first agreement that they should refer to the arbitration when i say international arbitration i mean i mean international trade law i, I mean international trade rules so that's why they could refer any time, okay, uh, for the international. They could use the international trade rules, but in case they should re need to resolve the dispute, they should make an agreement. Is it clear, Basel? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you're welcome. This rule of I want two parties are from different states' rights um in general yes even even when uh, in a contract international contract even there is two parties from the same state they could choose like um like your uh, colleague asked me one in usa another in france two companies and they should could they uh, for example use the german law yes even if they are in the same state okay for international trade they could uh, choose another uh, another legal rules are from different even they are from the same uh, country unless they choose the local uh, rules okay guys uh, 
just wait some bit. Lecture by lecture, you will understand everything. Okay, we have a part about this. Like you, like you, like you see, it's very important to understand everything related to international rules. How to we apply it? We will have a. Um, um, uh, we have. We will have uh, like a part, a lecture. Uh, we have. We will have a lecture related to international rules. How we uh, apply it, and uh, also. Uh, how we apply the foreign judgment, uh, the choice of law, and arbitration, etc. I will explain everything in this chapter. It's a chapter will be for this title, which is the dispute resolution, how we resolve disputes in case of international trade. So doesn't, like he said, uh, Mark, doesn't rock your brain. Okay, just wait some bit to understand everything related to international trade law. And after this, you will understand step by step everything related to uh, international dispute resolution okay so the last thing i have on uh, only uh, five minutes okay the last things that i need to um, uh, talk about is related to uh, just i'm trying to share my screen one moment, please. So first they go to an arbitrator, and if things are not resolved, then they will go to juridical court. No, no, no. If they choose to go to arbitrators, they have the obligation to accept the decision of the arbitrator. Kuala Lini. That's all. That's it. Okay? If they doesn't choose an arbitrator, they go to the judge directly. Even they doesn't mention in the court. It's very, guys, it's very complicated. Wait some bit. I will explain everything related. I, it will be organized. It not. It will not be ideas like this. It will be organized with titles, and you will understand everything. Just wait some lecture, few lectures. Okay. So now I'm just. Uh, I should mention in this lecture, um, in this introduction to international trade law. I should mention also that in international trade law, we take in consideration also. Um, things related to corruption in international business. That means uh, corruption, as you know, for example, you make an agreement with the uh, uh, government. We, uh, like example, now we have a process against Sarkozy in France. We have a process against Sarkozy in France because of a corruption made between uh, between when he was president and other countries like Libya and India, etc., for the uh, sale of arms and uh, agreements made between the French government or France and these states. So the uh, judge in France or the parquet, the judge in France is trying to find all the elements related to this um, case. I don't know if really he uh, made uh, some mistakes or he uh, commit a, committed a crime. I don't know. There is not. There is no decision yet related to this case. But there is a case opened here, and they are going. They are making investigation related to the case of Sarkozy. Uh, Sarkozy is um, uh, past uh, former president of the French Republic. So, um, uh, so the corruption. Uh, there is also, if we talk about corruption. I should mention the case of um, money laundering, blanchiment d'argent, money laundering that means um, uh, I have money from illegal sources like prostitution, like drugs, like uh, uh, terrorism, etc. And this money, I will transfer it to um, fine money, okay, to put it in banks and to use it and to make investment in, uh, for example, lands, buying cars, etc., etc., or opening uh, business, and I will transform this money from a legal source to uh, consider it as, or to make it as legal source. So this is a title that we should uh, also in this um, in this uh, course, which is called International Trade Law, that we should uh, also explain. That is the best way to cover up my mafia uncle from Sicilia to, told me. Uh, yeah, yeah. In in uh, in Italy or Sicily or in uh, Russia or there is uh, there is uh, like uh, 
techniques used in this in many many states it's it's a uh, international trade okay that's why i'm talking about this when we say we, we talk about international trade law we're talking about international law we're talking about international corruption in the world and one of these types of corruption with uh, a political politician um, politician political uh, man uh, who is corrupted or for example uh, politician sorry politician uh, corrupted or for example money laundering from from uh, for example mafia or from from uh, per individuals that have access to legal sources of uh, money okay any questions guys Sir, can you please talk at the end of the session about the quizzes we're going to have? Um, it's very early about to, to talk about this, but uh, in general, it will be in general it will be MCQ direct questions, uh, small direct question, MCQ, and true or false. Okay? Maybe we could uh, maybe we could try to to work about uh, to, to work on some cases also. Okay, I had prepared. If you have two minutes, okay, are uh, those quizzes the midterm? Uh, like I said, uh, like I said, it's very early to talk about this, Emma. Uh, yeah, it will be for the midterm, for the final, it's the same thing. Um, is it clear, Emma? To know what to expect. Okay, it's MCQ, true or false. Uh, we could have uh, a few questions, direct question. It will be small answers, with small answers. And it could be, uh, you could have a case study also, okay? Okay, great. So, um, Basel, you need to ask something? Yes, doctor. I uh, just have a couple of questions. First question, uh, are you going to put the slides on extranet? And the second question, uh, I just want to be sure. I know you already said it. But for, like, for, the, for the first question, yes. Okay. The second. Right. The second question, the final grade is going to be divided into a final exam and a midterm just that? Yeah, it's the system. It's like this. All right, all right. Just wanted to be okay. clear. All right, thank you, doctor. I, I will not change anything. It's just related to the system. The, the administration and the school have a, its own system, so I will respect everything related to this. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. Okay. So I, th I think that it will be uh, unified. The, it's the same system uh, used and adopted by all structures. I think this. Uh, no, because in some classes we had we had like some presentation and like a couple of quizzes for the midterm. Some only did one, right. one final. It depends on the course, really. Okay, so uh, in in all cases, I will refer to the responsible of the master, okay, uh, Mr. Kastlis, and I will uh, see with him what is the best for you because we have uh, an online teaching now. So uh, I will see the same is the best things to do with you which will be simple for you and uh, better for you okay no worries about this uh, what, is right, the most you. what is the most important like you see there is a lot of information okay we can because because we have a lot of experience in this uh, field and we there is a lot of uh, the field is very large so the most important now is to um, attend that means to be here to listen to the lecture and to uh, ask question if needed and to get all the answers and like you see there is a lot of information there is some discussions that could take place sometimes so you should attend okay it's very important my advice for you is to attend not just Basel. i'm talking about uh, with uh, everybody the attendance is the most important okay all right sir just another question because some of the we're, we're having classes once uh, per week on campus uh, yeah if we have any cl class with you on campus will you be able to come to uh, to campus yeah, yeah exactly it's, it's a deal with uh with the school it will happen early uh, we will see what will happen okay all right it's now 
it's now because there is uh, some problems related to COVID-19, etc., etc. So we will uh, fix this. Yeah, but okay. like for, for example, tomorrow we have one class on campus. Yeah. Each, yeah. each, each week we have one day per campus. Sorry, right, just about yeah. to, thank you. We will, we will try to do our best for this, okay? Any other question? Guys? Not from me, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, you should uh, now I will send uh, in few uh, hours, days. You have uh, this session is recorded, so I will send 